So Jaclyn Hill is back after the whole lipstick fiasco and her disappearing. And this is such a momentous occasion that we're back to the old setup, baby. What is up, everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I try to do is take different topics going on in the YouTube community, try to see what lessons we can pull from them to improve our own mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And yes, before we jump into Jaclyn Hill's return, real quick announcement. Go and check out my website, www.therewiredsoul.com. My brand new book, Cancelled, is out now. And oh my God, like hundreds of you have already downloaded it. It's totally free. Go check it out. If you do a $5 donation or more, when the audiobook comes out in the next week or so, you'll get a free copy of that. But anyways, that book, I analyze cancel culture on YouTube. I share some of my own experience and I talk about other situations in YouTube. And that's why I'm excited to talk about this topic with Jaclyn Hill. Like, oh, I'm gonna get some flack for it. You might cancel me for it, but her video, I'd give it an eight or a nine out of 10. So yeah, if you're not caught up to date on what went down with Jaclyn Hill and her lipstick launch, which I doubt that you're not caught up to date if you're watching this video, go check out the videos from Spill. She did a, a, a two-part series, was that one two or three parts? Either way, go check that out. They're long videos, but it will give you all of the details on it, all right? But anyways, I think the last time I made a video about Jaclyn Hill, she took a break from social media, she was working on her mental health, and now she's back. So there's a few clips that I pulled, but listen very carefully, watch this whole video. Like, my videos are for you, the viewer. Like, I was watching this, I was like, you go, girl. Like, there's so much that all of us can learn from it. Everybody, I mean, it's, it's just such an outpour of love and I am so thankful for you guys. You have no idea. And to all the influencers, I know that when things get rough, influencers don't want to jump out there and be um, be the person to stand up for somebody else because it's scary and you don't want to get involved. You know, it's like, you're like, oh gosh, like they're going through hell. Like I don't want to burn with them, you know? So it's like, you kind of like step to the side, like, oh, it's kind of like watch it happen. But, and I completely get that. That first clip right there, this is something that I talk about in my book. Um, when you are being canceled, when the hate mob is coming after you, a lot of your influencer friends will just scatter, all right? And like I dedicated a few chapters to discussing some of my relationships, so I, I can definitely empathize with what Jaclyn Hill is dealing with. Maybe you've dealt with this in your own life, if a rumor or something, or maybe you just screwed up and people distance themselves from you. But anyways, like Jaclyn Hill said, like one of the things that I'm truly grateful for was there were people who could not support me publicly because the hate mob would go after them, but they were supporting me behind the scenes. I have some people who still talk to me like every day, you know, and they see the improvements and the changes that I'm doing and they're just there to give me some motivation and some inspiration. But anyways, if you want to learn more about that, go get the book, it's free. I'm just terrified of seeming like a victim. I'm terrified of saying the wrong things, of people just, you know, picking this video apart because I know that's what's gonna happen and I know that it comes with the territory, of course, like I get all of that. But I'm just still really, I'm just really scared. I really am, let's be honest with you guys. It's hard for me to say that because, I'm sorry guys, I know that I'm not like supposed to cry. <laughs> and I'm gonna try my best to edit any like tears out, of course, because that's not the message that I wanna get across. So that clip right there is very interesting to me. It's really interesting because like throughout the video, she has to talk, she has to tell you all the things that she's not going to do. And this is how cancel culture works. Like, listen, Jaclyn Hill massively screwed up. I have massively screwed up. Anybody out there who has had the hate mob attack them has massively screwed up. But, but like, when we make these comeback videos, when other, and when any YouTuber makes a comeback video or a video, like, it gets picked apart. Like, it is insane and it lacks so much empathy to not understand that even though Jaclyn Hill screwed up, like she's a human being who has emotions. And the fact that you have to like edit out, like you're crying and things like that in fear that someone's gonna make a video saying that you're just trying to manipulate your audience is absolutely mind blowing, right? Like something I talked about in my last video is like, 
like until you go through this, you're never going to fully understand. Like I've been through it and I don't fully understand. Like my screw up was not as big as Jacqueline Hill's screw up. You know what I mean? Like she has the right to feel crappy about this. And I, it just sucks because I don't think YouTubers should have to come on camera and explain all the things that they're not gonna do just out of fear that people are gonna dissect it and make videos about it. Like, be a human, have emotions. But anyways, I do think Jaclyn Hill, you know, she did great with this one. Like, when she made her last video, when it came back, like, I think when I talked about it, like, she came off like, kind of abrasive. And I'm like, dang girl, why are you yelling at me? You know what I mean? And this video, I feel she did much better. But the reason I had to get away from social media and just fully delete it is because at that point, I had refunded everybody there, every single penny they had spent. I was humiliated, I was embarrassed, and it was time for me to start picking things up and putting the pieces back together and rebuilding. You know, as a CEO, as a boss, as an owner of a brand, you don't get to just sit back and be like, Wah! like you have to start rebuilding, right? Yes, yes, yes. So if you're a loyal subscriber who's been following the channel for more than like, I don't know, five minutes, you know that we start off every video with we talk about the problem, but we focus on the solution. And that's what Jaclyn Hill is talking about. Like, this is the mindset that I had to get in and I hope to God that you get in it too. Like, I had to get into this mindset when I got clean and sober seven years ago. Like, I would just mope around. I would just sit in self-pity, right? And that's what Jaclyn Hill's talking about. She was just sitting in self-pity like, oh my God, I'm a failure. Everybody hates me and da, da, da. Like, you can only do that for so long, right? Like, how long are you going to do that for? Like, if you wanna take what I call the pity party method, like what I personally do, I give myself a certain amount of time, all right? Typically, maximum, it's like three hours. Three hours to just feel sorry for myself, woe is me, everybody hates me and everybody's terrible, oh my God, right? After three hours is up of me just wallowing in my own pity, then it's time to get into the solution. And that is one of the reasons why I was so excited to make this video. Because Jacqueline Hill, she's like, you know what? Pfft, I gotta, I gotta fix this. I gotta do something. I gotta move forward and do this. And if you guys don't take anything from her video except for this, listen to me very carefully. The fact that she's talking about how she is not going to give up on her dream, like, oh, oh my God. Like, I can't tell you, like, when I was going through this, like, the amount of people, like, delete your channel. Pfft, I still get people telling me to delete my channel, right? And like, all I can think is like, when I look at people leaving those comments, I'm like, I feel bad for you. Like, I feel bad if you feel like when you screw up, you should just give up. You know what I mean? Like, that's not what we should do. So I'm super proud of Jacqueline Hill, like, to learn and hopefully grow from this. And that's what this next clip is about. It's a lot, it's aggressive, and I definitely was not prepared, and I definitely was very ignorant in this entire process of thinking what it would actually be. And for that, I am grateful. I'm. It sounds so weird, but I'm grateful for the fact that this happened because I immediately got to learn such incredible lessons on being a boss, on running a company, on how to talk to people, on, on how, how to do all of this. And I'm so grateful for the, that in this process. So I'm studying for my words. I'm just, my mind is all over the place. Yes, yes, yes. That clip right there, like the gratitude, okay? Like, you guys, like this is something that I try to teach people all the time. It's something that I had to learn as well. Be happy and grateful for your failures, okay? Like there is no such thing as losses. There are only learning experiences. So what Jacqueline Hill's talking about is like, she had this catastrophe happen on her first like solo brand launch right? But she learned about so many things that can go wrong. Like, she learned about it. Like, yes, it definitely sucks that so many people were affected by this, and she's trying to make it better, but she gave out refunds and all that other stuff, right? But she learned so much. Like, she learned so much about the importance of quality control, right? She talked about how she fired a bunch of people, brought in a new team, so many different things. So I want you to think about that with your own life too. Like you guys, like when I come here and, and talk to you guys and try to give you suggestions that might hopefully improve your mental and emotional well-being, I'm not coming from this place of all high and mighty like I'm this perfect human being. Like listen to me, just me and you real quick. I have literally made every single mistake that you can imagine, all right, but I try to learn from them and I'm still gonna make mistakes. You see what I mean? Like you guys, check it out. When you screw up, 
like the only way to go is up. Like that was the beautiful thing about being a, a hopeless drug addict. My life could not have gotten any worse. You know what I mean? So no matter what, it just went up, 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 up from there, you know? And that's how it's been for the last seven years. So remember that, like no matter what you've been through in your life, my suggestion is to try to look at these things and see how it's made you stronger, how it's made you better. Like a great example is relationships. Like so many people, when you get out of a relationship with somebody, so many of us are like, oh my God, I wasted so much time. I wasted so much time. No, you didn't waste time. You learned stuff. Like my beautiful girlfriend, Tristan, like even though she got, she has to deal with my pain in the butt, right? Like. I've learned so much from screwing up other relationships that she's getting the best version of me, baby. She's smiling. You can't see it, but she's smiling right now. At the end of the day, I have to rise up. It doesn't matter how much I don't want to film this. It doesn't matter how anxious or depressed or whatever I'm feeling. It doesn't matter. I signed up for this gig. I failed the first time. I'm going to keep going. I have got to get back to YouTube. I love it so much. YouTube is one of the things that yanked me out of my depression. You know, the most depressed I've ever been in my entire life is shortly before I started YouTube. So yeah, that right there, right there, which talks about she just got to rise up and do this thing. Like earlier in the video, she talked about how this comes with the territory. Like, holy crap. Like, like I get some flack sometimes and I, and I get it because sometimes I get passionate like I am in this video. And it's not all scripted like my last few videos have been. But anyways, like what she's saying right there is just what I wish every YouTuber on the platform understood or, or learned eventually. And hopefully you don't gotta go through the Jaclyn Hill situation to figure this out. Like this is what we signed up for. Like when we put ourselves out there in public, like we can't expect to just get all of the good and none of the bad. Like, and it sounds like she's become more aware of that. Like, listen, like if I screw up, people are gonna say things. People are gonna make videos. People are gonna, freaking biochemists are making videos about Jaclyn Hill, right? But she's finally becoming aware enough and losing that entitlement to say, oh my God, nobody should make videos about me. Like it's what happens, all right? Like we have to understand the more we want to achieve in life, the more stresses come. They're not, they're not terrible as they might've been before, but they're new, right? Like when you make a bunch of money, you got a, uh, you got a bunch of new taxes you gotta pay and things like that. Like when you go to college, you have college problems instead of high school problems, right? No matter what we do, there's going to be new things that come along with it. And she's like, now I just gotta get up and go do this thing. And one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this right here is because you could tell she's giving herself tough love. I give tough love. We even got some merch in the store that says tough love. But anyways, like, when I say it to you, I can come off kind of like a dick, all right? Like, what I love about Jacqueline, and this is just something I have to do too, and I hope that you do too, like, you have to just, at a certain point, you gotta say, all right, it's time to get up and go, go to work. Time to get up and go into the solution. Because we get all touchy and like sensitive when other people say it to us, but we have to train ourselves to get up and go into that solution, you know what I mean? I try to be polite and try to be nice, but still sometimes I'm just like not, the way I should be and I'm out of line and I was out of line and I reached out to her directly and apologized to her and she was very sweet for accepting my apology but still just publicly I want to say that that wasn't cool for me to not sit back, wait, see if anything else happened, do investigation. I should have DM'd her privately and had a conversation. I should not have done that. And so for that, I am very sorry and we'll definitely be more mindful of that in the future. The last thing I wanna talk about is that clip right there because this is just something really fascinating about cancel culture, all right? So Jaclyn Hill, had uh, she didn't have to, but she chose to. She realized that she was in the wrong and apologized to that young woman privately in DMs, right? She apologized privately in DMs, they're okay now. But because of cancel culture, Jaclyn Hill had to talk about it in this video. You wanna know why? Because unless the hate mob knows you did that thing, then did it really happen? You see what I mean? Like, isn't that kind of interesting about cancel culture? Because then you're kind of in this lose-lose situation because it can be really easy for, for people from the hate mob to say, oh, Jacqueline, why'd you have to tell us that you messaged her privately? If you messaged her privately, why didn't you just, you know, leave it private, right? But if she didn't tell you, people would continue making videos because it's brought up in almost every video about Jacqueline Hill about how she sassed that young woman. You know what I mean? So if she didn't tell you, then she would have been screwed either way. So much with cancel culture, is lose-lose, right? But I also like how Jaclyn Hill discussed this because this is something that I had to learn and I'm still learning, right? Like for me, 
I'm just me, I'm just Chris, the guy in my little apartment making videos, but I have an influence now, I have a following, I have to be more careful with how I respond to things. And if I'm being honest with you, that's why I block so many people, because I cannot respond in a calm fashion. <laughs> you know what I mean? So anyways, it's great that Jaclyn Hill was self-aware of that fact, and she's trying to learn and grow from this experience. All right, but anyways, let me know your thoughts on this. Like, if you still want to cancel Jaclyn Hill, my channel is the wrong channel for you. Like, here at The Rewired Soul, we are against cancel culture, all right? So make sure you go to my website, therewiredsoul.com, get your free copy of the book, Canceled, or you can do a little donation, get the audiobook for free when it comes out in the next week. My editor, Zach, is working his butt off on that audiobook. All right, but anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing, and thank you all so much who have donated, who have downloaded the book. Like, it is just blowing me away, and I'm so grateful. I love all of you. All right, thanks again, and I'll see you next time.